Okay, so you heard a bunch of people talk about how great film photography is and you decided I want to do that. You bulk ordered beanies and flannel shirts, now all you need is a camera. Well, get ready to sell your kidney for a Leica. I'm kidding, of course. Which type of camera you pick as your first film camera is quite important. It's the first plunge you take into this weird self-contained analog universe that mostly consists of people that are scared of the future and therefore choose to use old obsolete technologies. Today I'm going to introduce you to the different types of 35mm cameras and what style of shooting they are good for. So you'll be happy with a camera that fits your needs and you will also get sucked into the analog void. Today we're only going to look at 35mm cameras because they are the most affordable and easiest way to get into film photography. Now the first category of cameras that you probably all know are point and shoots. These things are great for beginners because they take care of everything for you. They automatically advance the film for you, set the exposure and focus, you can take it out of your pocket when you're out, turn it on, hit the shutter and put it away again. It's a really unobtrusive way to capture great moments from your life. And that's what really stands out with point and shoot cameras compared to the other types of cameras I'm about to introduce. If you're looking for something to just take some fun pictures with from your life and not worry about anything else, a point and shoot camera is for you. I wanted to say it's great for when you're out with friends or family, but that's definitely not happening right now. I mean, look at my lockdown hair. I don't think I have had this long hair since like the fifth grade, but back then my hair was like shoulder long. <laughs> There's one thing that you should definitely look out for when you're looking into buying a point-and-shoot camera. You should definitely get one that has a fixed lens like this AF35 M2 from Canon. It has a fixed 38mm lens at f2.8. There are point-and-shoots out there with zoom lenses and the problem with these is that most of the time they will take pretty horrible pictures. They limit the light coming in because, well, they have a zoom lens and most of the time it goes from f3.5 to like 6.3 or something like that and having that little light available is definitely not something you want. A point and shoot with a fixed focal length like this one will definitely get you better results. If you're looking for something a bit more methodical you should definitely take a look at rangefinder cameras or SLRs. First let's take a look at rangefinder cameras. I actually do own a rangefinder camera but it's not what you traditionally think of as being a rangefinder camera. Rangefinders are like the grandparents of point and shoots. They were thought to be small and light. Most of them are fully manual and require you to do everything from advancing the film to metering the scene and setting the exposure correctly. This rangefinder camera though is from the early 60s and it doesn't quite have that classic rangefinder look people think of. Most rangefinder cameras have fixed lenses because you obviously can't change the frame of the viewfinder and guessing what is or isn't in frame just wasn't fun for people for some reason. Rangefinder cameras are really cool though, they have that really classic film look and they always get you hipster points and they often take great quality photos. A good rangefinder camera will often run you a bit more money than an SLR though. SLR stands for I'm so broke but I want to buy a Leica, please buy this stolen radio. I'm just kidding of course. SLR stands for single lens reflex and just with rangefinders you have to do pretty much everything manual. You have this little lever to advance the film, you need to set your shutter speed and you need to set the aperture at the front of the lens most of the time and you rewind the film by turning this little guy on the side. Many a bit more modern SLRs that are from the mid 80s or newer have some nice automatic features as well, though this one is fully mechanical. The great thing about SLRs compared to rangefinder cameras is that you can change the lens. SLRs are similar to the more modern digital SLRs or DSLRs that you probably know, hence the name. There is a mirror in here that allows you to see exactly what the lens sees through the viewfinder. When you take a photo, this mirror flips up and allows the film to get some of those delicious photons. Due to having this mirror in there, they are a bit bigger than rangefinders. There are a lot of popular SLRs like the Canon AE-1 for example that aren't cheap because everybody wants them. But there are some amazing deals out there if you look at some less popular models. Like this beautiful Practica MTL-5B that I just got very recently. It's from the mid 80s and it's in an amazing condition, it looks like new. I just got it for 33 bucks and just the body, I had the lens already. 
I haven't developed the roll of film yet that I put through this yet, so I don't know how the results will be. Looking past the popular SLR models out there, there are some amazing gems on eBay. I can especially recommend cameras with an M42 mount like this one, because they will give you access to the biggest lens collection ever. M42 lenses were produced for decades and there are so many great M42 lenses available for cheap that you can just pop on here and take some great photos. I really love the legendary Helios 44 that I have on here. It has that really swirly bokeh that a lot of people love and it just gives an amazing look to your photos. I actually got this lens for under 50 bucks which is pretty standard price for this lens and I can definitely recommend it. Another tip I want to give you is look for a camera that takes modern batteries. This camera actually takes standard LR44 batteries and you definitely want to look for something that takes these modern standard batteries. A lot of old cameras use these old mercury-based battery standards but I would definitely recommend that you get a camera that takes some form of battery that you have easy access to. Those old mercury-based batteries are really hard to come by and you're not gonna have any fun trying to hunt them down. I believe this camera actually only uses the battery for the built-in light meter, which I don't use anyways. So I believe that I could just use it fully mechanical and leave the battery out and it would also be fine. So a great alternative is to just get a camera that is fully mechanical and just metering with your phone. Manual rangefinder cameras and SLRs are great if you want a more methodical approach to taking pictures. Completely slowing down the process by requiring you to meter for the scene and change your settings accordingly really is something that you need to get used to, but it makes you think about your shots differently. One category of film cameras I often see overlooked is more modern SLR cameras that were developed just before the rise of digital. Like this Canon EOS 300 here. This model and similar ones can be had for very cheap and if you've used any DSLR from the past years, you'll feel right at home. This thing has complete automatic settings like shutter priority or aperture priority, autofocus, though it's a bit wonky on this one here sometimes. Also, there's a built-in flash, it will advance and rewind your film for you and it even takes EF lenses, which is amazing. This on here is just the standard Canon 50mm f1.8 STM lens that a lot of people probably already have at home. If you already have some EF glass and pick up a camera like this, I will guarantee you, you can get some amazing results from it. This allows for a more familiar experience if you're coming from a DSLR and there is a lot less that can go wrong than when you're going fully manual. And it might also be a good compromise between quality and still being able to whip it out for a few quick shots. These are the main styles of 35mm cameras that you should know about. If you have decided which style of camera suits the kind of photography you want to do with it, a good idea is to maybe search for some videos like best cheap M42 mount SLR cameras or best cheap 35mm point and shoot cameras. So you can find a specific camera model you can keep your eye on. If you're buying from eBay, you can get some amazing deals if you just wait for a while and keep your eyes peeled until you see that one great deal pop up. Another big tip I want to give you if you're buying from eBay is to check if the description says item is fully functional and has been tested. I hope this video helped you understand the difference between these different types of cameras and what kind of style of shooting they are helpful for. To recap really quickly, point and shoots are a great way to capture some candid moments from your life. Rangefinder cameras will definitely get you some hipster points and they are often fully manual, such as these SLRs that are also often fully manual and they will definitely make you slow down the process of photography instead of spraying photos around like wild as a lot of people do on digital like me. So if you're tired of coming home with 40 gigs worth of photos after a two hour shoot and you just want to take a breather and take some photos in a more methodical way, these types of cameras are definitely for you. And a more modern SLR can definitely help you if you already have experience with a DSLR and want to feel comfortable and all you want are some great results. Thank you everybody for watching and sticking around till the end of this video. See you in the next one.